<clears throat> Hello. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is demonstrate how to set a stage by killing a certain amount of enemies. So I'm going to start by creating a whole new quest. So I'm going to right click new. I'm just going to call it tutorial kill counter quest. I'm just going to call it kill the enemies, give it priority 45, and hit OK. Save that. Now I'm just going to look for the quest that I just made. I'm going to create um, an initial start stage and some objectives. So now I'm just going to make my quest start the instant uh, the game loads up with no conditioning or anything like that. But if you want to see how to start it based on player level or something like that, uh, check out my tutorial for that or you know, any of the other quest tutorials I've done. So I'm just going to check run on start. So it'll start the instant the game loads up. I'm just going to put set objective displayed 10. I'm going to compile that. And there we go. Now my quest is only going to have one stage, which is just going to be kill the enemies. So then I'm going to create stage 20, which is going to be to complete the quest. Okay, uh, I'm back. The phone went and I had to go and get it. So I'm just going to create two quests, which is going to be one, which is just going to be... I'm just going to put a little prompt in here for us to remember that that is just to launch the quest. And then this is just going to be to complete the quest. So now I'm going to go to my objectives and I'm going to define an objective for number 10, which we went before. And I'm going to go kill the enemies. There you go. Okay. Save that. And now I'm going to um, pause here and I'm going to go and search for a suitable location to place my enemies. Okay, so I decided to use the cheers bar because there's nothing in here. So it should be fine to put enemies in here. And so now the advantage again we have over the last creation kit the, uh, is that in the get we have to create whole unique enemies and give them a script and attach it to them. But we can do this without creating anything new. We can just find some enemies to kill. So... I'm going to see about adding some sort of leveled raiders. I'll just look for somebody suitable. Um, I'll just drag in these generic LVL raiders. Here, like this. And I can't bloody click on them. Because there's sudden dust floating them away. So just drag this guy to the ground. And what we can do as well is we can double click on him. And if we scan across to extra... We can set a oh nice no, extra. Um, if we scan across the leveled actor, we can select the difficulty of this uh, leveled actor. So I'm just going to go hard, and the color will change when we do that. So I'm just going to duplicate a whole load of these. I probably won't do too many. All right, so I've created three enemies. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them to be initially disabled, so that um. We can't, the player can't do request too early. So I'm going to just do it like this. So I don't have to bother with initially disabled. Edit. Initially disabled. Edit. Initially disabled. So now to enable them, I'm going to create an enable parent. So I'm going to go to static. And I'm just going to look for X marker. Click and drag this X marker in. And I've got markers turned off so we can't see it. It's a bit cluttered, really. Um, so now we're going to want to select our three raiders. So I'm just going to click them on in this menu. Control click, control click, control click. Then I'm going to hit. I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on the render window. I'm going to hit the minus key over here. I'm just bringing up this uh, batch with. Oh shit! I've selected this mist. I just need to un make sure that's not selected because we don't want the mist to be in any way involved. So I've only got that raider selected. Selected all of those. Hit the minus key, and that's brought up this batch uh, menu. And I'm going to select Enable Parent. I'm going to select Reference and Render Window. Now, hopefully it will get the X marker first time. Yeah, it has done X marker. Hit Do. And that has created, we'll be able to see these little lines going from our Raiders into the X marker. Now we're going to just double click the X marker. Like that. And hit initially disabled. I'm just going to give it a reference ID, so I'll just call it Raider Spawn Marker. Okay, so now all of these have got the enable parents Raider Spawn Marker. So if I zoom in on them, it'll show that that has been done. If I can have a bloody click, I'll just right click edit 
and if we sidle along to enable parent we can see Raider Spawn Marker and that batch menu method is just a quick way to make lots of things have one enable parent. So now we can enable all of these at once with our quest. So we need to travel back to our quest. And it was called Tutorial Kill Counter Quest. And I'm going to... Okay, this is why I saved uh, my plugin frequently. So we're going to go back into the Kill Counter Quest now. And we're going to go back to the stage and we're going to enable that X marker that we created before. So I'm going to create a property, add a property, and we're going to do an object reference, um, where are they, there they are, and it was called radius spawn marker, like that, and that has automatically pointed to the beacon hill pub radius spawn marker, okay. So now I'm just going to put in radius spawn marker dot enable open brackets close brackets compile that and that should work there we go so next up we're going to want to create the aliases for each of those raiders so we're going to want to um i'll probably load beacon hill pub actually because uh, because i didn't give any of the raiders unique ids it'll be harder to track them down so we're going to have to do a select and render window thing so what i could do is just give them um if i give them these tutorial raider 01 like that it'll be easier for me to select them Edit tutorial Raider 02. I click edit tutorial Raider 03. Edit. Okay, so now we're going to create some aliases for each of these. So we're going to create right click new reference alias. I'm just going to call it Raider 01, and it's going to be a specific reference. And instead of clicking on the render window, which is just going to be a bit difficult because of all the uh, mist effects floating around, I'm just going to search for the Beacon Hill pub area. And we should be able to select the Tutorial Raiders. Um, tutorial Raider 01. Okay. And we're going to hit Allow Disabled because he'll start off disabled. And so we're going to do that. And so now we're going to create a new alias, which is going to be Raider 02. And it's going to be the same process again of a specific reference in Beacon Hill Pub. Except now we're looking for Tutorial Raider 02, who's allowed disabled. New reference alias. And we're going to call it Raider 03, who's going to be a specific reference in Beacon Hill Pub. And we're going to look for Tutorial Raider 03. So now all three of these raiders have aliases. And I forgot to allow disabled on this guy. Okay. okay. I'm just going to OK out of everything and save. Because we're going to need to attach scripts to those aliases. And some, sometimes if you don't OK out of everything, none of the scripts are going to show up. So I'm just going to double click on Raider 01 to begin with. And we're going to add a script. So I've already got a thing written in my filter, so I'm just going to clear that out. Sometimes this takes a while to load, so I might cut this out. Okay, sometimes that, when I clear something out my filter, it takes ages to load, and sometimes it does it straight away. So we're looking for the counter. So we've got two different types of counter. Default alias ink once on activate A, and we don't want to activate it, we want to do the def one. So default counter alias ink once on def A. So this counter will go up every t um, when this particular alias dies. So just going to double click that. All this stuff will come up. But uh, we don't want any of uh, that. We don't need to do any of that. Okay. And we just need to do exactly the same with the other two aliases. Add alias on def A. And we don't need to adjust any properties. And we can go into this one and do exactly the same thing. Add uh, ink once on def A. Okay. Okay. So now, that's at the moment no good, because that isn't actually doing anything, it's just incrementing the counter. So we need to add a script to the quest script. So if we add a script here, we'll see these ones, so it's already got counter in the filter. So we're looking for default counter quest A, because obviously we've got uh, ink on def A in there, so we want on A. So we're looking for target value, and because there's three raiders, we're going to want our target value to be three. When the value reaches this uh, value, which is 3, we want to set a particular stage. So that's going to be 20, because that's our complete quest phase. So I'm going to hit OK there. I'm just going to OK out and save. 
But now we're going to want to set up uh, an objective marker because at the moment we don't have one of those. So we're going to want to have uh, markers on all three of these raiders for kill the enemies. Right click new. We're going to want to select raider 1, raider 2, raider 3. But obviously these will continue even once the raider is dead so we're going to want to add some conditions. So for raider 1 we're going to right click new. I think is it get dead? Yeah that's the stuff. Get dead. And we're going to run on quest alias Raider 1, so, and then we're going to change that to 0. So this objective on Raider 1 will only appear when Raider 1 isn't dead. So I'm just going to copy that for ease and then go to Raider 2, paste it in, double click in, select Raider 2 in the alias to run it on. Okay. Then we're going to travel to Raider 3, paste it in, select Raider 3 for the alias to run it on, and there we go. So now what's going to happen is, at the very, very second stage 10, uh, the very second the game loads up, stage 10 will be set, which is going to set objective display 10, and it's going to enable the raider spawn marker. And because these have a raider spawn marker as their enabled parents, when this is enabled, all these fellas will also get enabled. So then the objectives are going to show up, which is going to point to raider 1, raider 2, and raider 3. And raider 1, raider 2, and raider 3 are these people here, who are indicated by their quest alias and each of them has this fragment has this papyrus uh, alias script which is default counter alias ink once on depe so whenever one of these people dies uh, the counter will be incremented until eventually it gets to the value of three and once we reach the value of three stage 20 is being set and at stage 20 we complete the quest and let's also fill in these little blanks now so make it a side quest and give it some completion xp so i'll just give it xp radiant Okay, and okay, and save. And that should be that done, so I'm now going to go in the game and demonstrate that working. Okay, so kill the enemies has just started. So I'm going to need to go to data quests, get rid of that, enable kill the enemies. There's our map markers all the way over there. So we've got to go to, there they are. All squashed up there. I can't, I can't be bothered fast traveling there, so I'm going to go COC, Beacon Hill, Pub, and we're going to appear in here where hopefully a bunch of raiders are going to attack me. There they are. Oh god, it's quite, uh, I shouldn't have put one hard, I should have put one easy. Um, I usually use this. So he's dead, so his mark is disappearing now. that one nice and simple Jackpot. so uh, yeah that's that hopefully that was clear hopefully that was useful thank you for watching and bye